The Borders Railway reopened in 2015 and connects Edinburgh with Tweed Bank and in total trains call at nine stations along its route. The Borders Railway is 35 miles long, a similar length to East West Rail's final section of New Line linking Bedford and Cambridge. The Borders Railway has not just delivered improved connectivity, but has also been the catalyst for regeneration and inward investment in the area. But before the railway was approved, many felt its business case didn't stack up and there were active campaigns to prevent the railway reopening. I mean, there was a whole political party set, set up to stop the railway being put into place because they felt it was going to be detrimental to the countryside, they felt there wouldn't be an economic case for it, it was going to be a waste of money, etc, etc. But that has absolutely been forgotten about now because of the boom. I mean, it's impossible sometimes to get a seat on that train. The fact that they only give us two carriages most of the time, they expected those two carriages to be empty. But now those two carriages were consistently full, they gave us extra carriages, they were going to shift us to an hourly service, now they're consistently they put us back to a half hourly service and those half hourly services are always full. And businesses have also started to invest in the borders, businesses and lawyer firms etc, So, which is very, very important thing for the local economy. But the railway has also delivered an economic boost to the region's tourism industry as the lines made it easier for visitors to the Scottish capital to also travel to the many attractions here in the borders. It made a massive difference. Um, you instantly saw a lot more travel coming from, well, up north and also down south as well, obviously, because of the changeover in the Waverley. Um, so it brought in a lot more of a diverse crowd, um, as well as just bringing in more money for the towns and the borders. Um, in doing that as well, obviously, you then saw a big increase in money being spent in the towns too, which has obviously made it a lot better for us as well. All the all this new money input that's getting put into the borders is something we've not seen and to be fair, it's all basically been because of the start of the railway build. The campaign group which lobbied for the reopening of the borders railway believes new railways such as this have the potential to deliver similar benefits in areas like the Oxcam Arc. They also believe that borders rail is now the template for other reopening projects. I know that other campaigns all over the country are now watching us because they see us as somewhat leading the way of having the railway reinstated. Even our national politicians were not supportive in the first instance about this railway being built, but they now see the benefits that it could regenerate the whole area. But in the future, Tweed Bank might not be the terminus of this railway, as it's hoped a further section could also be reopened, and a £10 million feasibility study has been approved to explore options to extend this line onto Hoyk and Carlisle, a decision which once again highlights the success this reopened railway has been. One thing I would say about that, it's as if the railway's always been here. You forget that it wasn't here because of the boom and, and the way that it's came in and just really revolutionised Gallus Hughes. We've got a lot of things happening. The streets used to be, you know, quite a few empty shops, but now the shops are getting filled and people are coming in and literally someone's coming in replacing them. It's an emerging town. We now have big national franchises taking over as well in certain areas of the town. So it's something that's really made an impact overall, I think we can see. Why did we even try to stop something that is so special for this region and really delivered so much for this region?